Lesson 5c, Path of Blood Through the Heart. The heart is described as a double pump, where the right side pumps blood to the lungs to become oxygenated, and the left side pumps the blood to all the different organs and tissues of the body to provide them with oxygen, water, and nutrients, while removing waste produced by cellular metabolism. Blood from the body returns to the heart via the veins. The largest vein, connected directly to the heart, is called the vena cava. The upper branch is called the superior vena cava, bringing deoxygenated blood from the upper part of the body to the heart. The lower branch is the inferior vena cava, which brings deoxygenated blood from the lower portion of the body. Remember, blood pressure is low here, so blood is returned to the heart using valves and skeletal muscle contraction, not by the pressure created by the contracting heart muscles. Once the right atrium fills with oxygen-poor blood, colored in blue, the atria contracts, pushing blood through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. The ventricle in turn contracts, pushing deoxygenated blood out of the heart past the pulmonary valve into the lungs. The deoxygenated blue blood will travel to the lungs via the pulmonary artery. Note that the blood is traveling away from the heart, therefore it's traveling through an artery. This is the one case where an artery is carrying deoxygenated blood. Once in the lungs, oxygen and carbon dioxide gas will be exchanged in the air of the lungs. Oxygenated blood will travel back to the heart via the pulmonary vein. Again, the only time a vein will carry oxygen-rich blood. Note the red color. This oxygen-rich blood will now pool in the left atrium before the atrium contracts, pushing the blood past the mitral valve into the left ventricle. The left ventricle, comprised of the thickest cardiac muscle, will in turn contract, pushing the oxygen-rich blood past the aortic valve into the aorta so that it may travel to all the organs and tissue of the body, where oxygen and nutrients will be traded for waste such as carbon dioxide. This double cycle occurs roughly once per second. This double pump system of the heart sees both the atria squeezing simultaneously, and as the atria relaxes the ventricles squeeze simultaneously, pushing blood to the lungs and to the body. There is a momentary time where all four chambers relax, and then the cycle begins again. We call the squeezing of the ventricles systole, and the relaxing of the ventricles diastole. The lub-dub heart sounds that we are familiar with are created by the opening and closing of the heart valves. The heart itself has intrinsic control of the heartbeat, meaning that the heart alone can beat without need for input from other organs or organ systems, including the brain. The heart itself can continue beating when removed from the body, as long as the heart muscle is healthy and has a supply of oxygen and nutrients. This is achieved from special nerve fibers located in the myocardium of the heart. The right atrium has a bundle of tissue called the sinoatrial node, or SA node, which will release an electrical impulse, which will cause the atria to contract every 0.85 seconds or so. This special tissue is often called the pacemaker of your heart as it will cause a contraction of the muscle tissue without any outside influences. As the SA node impulse reaches the septum, there is another bundle of tissue called the atria ventricular node, or AV node. This in turn will send a signal via special muscle cells called Purkinje fibers, and this will cause the ventricles to contract. These electrical impulses from the heart can be detected using a device creating a visual representation of a heartbeat called an electrocardiogram, or EKG. All healthy hearts have a typical AKG shape, which includes structures labeled P, Q, R, S, and T. P is where the atria is contracting. Q, R, and S show the ventricles contracting, or systole. And T is where the entire heart relaxes, or diastole, before the next contraction occurs and the cycle repeats. The heart is also extrinsically controlled by the medulla oblongata, which is the cardiovascular center of the brain. The medulla will increase or decrease the heart rate during times of exercise, stress, relaxation, etc.